What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often So faithful, who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. In his arms, sing that last line. In his arms he'll take and shield Thou will find a solace there. When you abide with me, I fear no foe, no bitter tears could ever shake my soul. Though arrows fly, Though terror reigns, I will not fear, for you abide with me. When you abide with me, my worries bow. You are my comforter in every hour. Though storms and sorrows rise like raging seas, I will not fear, for you abide with me. Never forsaken, my strength will never be found in the hope that's taken hold of me. Through light and darkness, my soul will see, for you abide with me. When you abide with me, my heart finds rest, my life is hidden in your righteousness. Hell has no power, death has no sting, and I will not fear for you abide.
never forsaken, never forsaken. My strength will ever be found in the hope that's taken hold of me. Through light and darkness, my soul will sing, for you abide with me. When you abide with me, I overcome through flood and fire. The victory is won. I stand secure in joy and peace forever yours. For you abide with me forever yours. For you abide with me. John? Yeah. Hey, that, that's not one of Tommy Walker's songs out of that uh, John. Boy, that ought to come right out of John. That, that, that worked right there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, new friend, old friend to his, new friend to me that uh, has written a song, I think, for every chapter in the book of John. And I've been listening to it. Yeah, man, it's great. And one of those uh, would fit right, right in that. We're going to have Tommy come share with us. Don't forget that card next Sunday night. Speaking of music, uh, all of our students will be in here, and you can see we're having that uh, generation of worshipers that will lead us next Sunday night with all the kids and the students, and they're doing their thing now, getting ready for that. So uh, you, you be here and uh, bring your friends. We'll have a good time. Well, this Thursday is the National Day of Prayer, and so you want to be somewhere praying. Our chapel uh, will be open. You come by here and pray. They certainly have gatherings downtown in Pensacola. If you want to drive over to Robertsdale at 7.30 on Thursday morning, I'll be speaking there. Uh, it's the city of Robertsdale, Alabama, and uh, I'll be in uh, that meeting. But you find somewhere and be in a prayer meeting on the National Day of Prayer. You say, well, I don't know anywhere to go. Well, start one at your house, all right? Just pray for America. Uh, on Thursday, you turn in on television. There'll be... Uh, uh, broadcasting some of that. Our good friend, Dr. Ronnie Floyd, that has preached here for us and uh, is from Arkansas, is now heading the National Day of Prayer uh, across America. So you be praying for Ronnie. He and uh, Gina are in Washington tonight. Talked to him yesterday and uh, praying with him and for him as he leads that gathering uh, there in the nation's capital. So you be praying uh, about that. But I thought we'd talk about prayer a few minutes tonight, and then I want us to pray. Uh, we'll have uh, a time of prayer here a little bit more uh, as we conclude. But I want you to take your Bible, go to the fifth chapter of the Revelation, and we're going to read the first ten verses tonight. Revelation, uh, did I say ten? Chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1 through verse number 10. The last Sunday night, we <clears throat> took a look at a portion of the latter portion of this chapter. We want to look at the first half tonight. Revelation chapter 5. Beginning in verse number one, John is writing and he says, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. And I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and the elders a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, which are sent out into all the earth. And it came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. 
And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Notice that little phrase in verse number 8 that when he came, each one was holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Interesting that that is included in this worship service, this receptacle with incense like the psalm speaks of the incense going up to God, uh, of the prayers of God's people. Now, I want to give you four simple truths about prayer tonight out of this text. Number one, you know, everybody in here knows this, but everybody had practiced this. First, a Christian can pray. A Christian can pray. Notice in the text, verse 10, speaking to the Lord, you have made them, the redeemed, to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. We call it the priesthood of the believer. That is, you don't have to have your pastor or priest to pray for you. You pray. You go right to the throne of heaven through Jesus Christ, the one priest, the high priest that we, so Christians can pray. You don't need me. Now, I will pray for you. You will pray for me, I hope. Hope you'll pray one for another as we did a little while ago, but you don't need anything other than the Word of God. The kingdom of heaven is open, the throne is occupied, and the door is thrown wide open, and you can walk in any moment, any time. You are a priest. Live up to who and what you are. Now, you ought to ask other people to pray for you, and you ought to pray for it, but... Just walk into the throne room of God, the priesthood of the believer. You go straight to the Father. A Christian can pray, and you ought to pray. You ought to pray without ceasing. As I often tell you, as Dr. Olford told me years ago, you ought to pray when you feel like it. You ought to pray when you don't feel like it. You ought to pray until you do feel like it. Pray without ceasing. You can pray. Go straight to the Father. So number one, a Christian can pray. Number two, a Christian should pray. Not only can you pray, you should pray. And you ought to pray every day. Ask, seek, and do what? Knock. Ask and seek and knock. A Christian should pray. Now, dear friend, you're not ready to go to work till you've prayed. You're not ready to leave the house before you pray. You're not ready to face the enemy till you've prayed. A Christian should pray. Not just on Sunday. Lord, face any day of the week you ought to pray, it's tomorrow. Monday morning, you, you ought to really be at it. Getting up a little earlier than normal. A Christian should pray. Carving out time to pray. I'm always amazed at people that will ask me to pray for them. I'm encouraged by that. Nobody ever asked me, John, to sing for them. Nobody ever walks up to me and say, Pastor, would you just throw down and preach for me right now? No, nobody ever asked me that. Nobody ever asked me, would you just teach me the Bible right now? Just walk in? No, no. But I have people on the street, in the airport, on the sidewalk, in the church. In the, they'll walk right up to me and say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. And a Christian should pray. And we ought to pray one for another, but you should pray every day without ceasing for yourself and others. You can pray if you're a believer. So, well, I'm not very good at it. Well, you'll get better if you'll practice. You learn. 
That was what the disciples asked the Lord. Father, please, Lord Jesus, Rabbi, please teach us to pray. Over in Luke, I believe it's chapter 18, the first verse, Lord, teach us to pray. You can pray. Number two, a Christian should pray. Number three, a Christian, I'm talking about someone that's born again, will pray. I'm telling you, if you're saved, you will pray. If you don't pray, you're lost. So if you get to know the Father, you'll take every need you got and lay it in his lap. When you become born again and you are a child of the living God, I'm telling you, you will pray. You'll do it. You say, well, I may not do it well. I didn't say you'd do it well. I didn't say you'd do it with eloquence. But I'm telling you, you will pray. When you get saved, you come to know the Father, you will pray. You may just pray this much, but you pray. You'll cry out unto the Lord. You will pray. Children pray. Even before they get saved, they'll, they'll pray. Boy, they'll put their little hands together and they'll, they'll pray. They'll believe God. Sometimes more than I'll believe God. But they'll pray. Why? Because they do believe the Father hears. And oftentimes our unbelief, God help my unbelief, that we just don't pray. But Christians will pray. Pray without ceasing. Does that mean you stay on your knees all the time? No, but that means you've got a spirit of prayer within you. And just at the drop of a hat, you pray. You're always ready to engage to pray. I've given you this before and just give it to you again. It's, I have a series of, of ways I pray. Dr. Olford taught me this uh, years ago. And so tomorrow is Monday. That's the M day. And so I pray about missions tomorrow. Tomorrow's when I pray for the chairman of the search committee for the new executive committee post. I pray for Brian Nall tomorrow. Every Monday I pray for the director of missions. He's a member of our church. He's here tonight. I pray for our director of missions. I pray for Tommy Green, who's the uh, pres uh, director of Florida Baptist Convention. Uh, I pray for him. I pray for the president of Southern Baptist Convention. Oh, I've been praying a lot for Steve Gaines of late, getting ready for the convention. Talked to him twice yesterday about some issues, it, uh, hoping, just praying for him, telling him I was pulling for him, and gave him some advice, what I thought he ought to do, not to ask to take it, but just let him know I'm praying for him. He called me back, and we talked. I pray for him. pray for Kevin Ezell, North American Mission Board. I pray for the search of the International Mission Board. We're looking for that. Uh, I pray for our own mission here. I pray for the Warrington group. I pray for John Huff, who's coming on to help us here and do missions uh, in, in our church and uh, doing college work. So tomorrow is M day for me. I pray about missions and missionaries, and, and so I write those in, in my book. T, Tuesday. Tuesday is the word uh, for tasks. I have a Thursday task. But uh, on Tuesday, I pray about personal tasks, things that I have to do. Sermons that I have to preach, and uh, engagements I have to keep, appointments I have, counseling I'll do. Uh, I pray about my personal tasks, things that I need to do. Wednesday is the W day. I pray for workers. That's the day I pray uh, for our staff. Uh, I just began to enumerate that. And I'll begin to walk through the staff and praying for them. I call John and Angie's name unto the Lord, praying for them. I'll pray for Dan Beard. I prayed for Dan. Dan's had surgery this week, had sinus surgery. He's been a rough way all week long. It's been very hard. Is that a, what do you call it, a, the deviated septum? Is that what that is? Did I get the word right? Uh, I think in, in Greek that means bleeds a lot, all right? Uh, he, he's had a hard time with that thing during this week. And, uh, so I pray for Dan, Tracy, pray for Stan, Kristen, everybody. So I just walk through and enumerate uh, our staff, workers, I pray for them. Man, I put Beth Harris right at the top of that deal, my administrative assistant. If anybody needs prayer, it's whoever works for me, all right? So I, I pray for Beth. So I just walk right through the workers of different ones and our deacon leadership and a lot of different places. And then another tea day comes on Thursday, and I don't pray for my personal task. I pray for professional tasks 
then. Uh, uh, things that I've been called on to do in a professional role as a pastor of this church. F, uh, Friday is F day. That's when I pray for my family. That's the, and I pray for a lot of these things uh, on an ongoing way. But this is the day I always bear down. I'm praying for my wife. I'm praying for my daughter and for Brad, her husband, for the two girls. I'm praying for Bennett. Uh, I pray for my mother and my father. You can join me right now. My daddy's owned a grocery store for 56 years, and it's now gone empty. Went out of business at the end of last month, and so he still has to pay taxes and uh, insurance on that building and doesn't have any income now for the first time in 56 years, and we need to get rid of that building, and uh, we need to sell it or give it away, and that's one of the things I'm praying for daddy, and I'll call him. We talk about it. We got to move this building, get rid of it. He talked to me yesterday, and he said, I don't need this store building. You don't want this store building? I said, amen. He said, so I have decided I'm just going to trust God and he will take care of this. So my 92-year-old daddy, he just found and I said, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm praying about that. And I'll pray for Liz's mother. And I've started, I'll write Mary's name down. You know she hadn't walked in five years. And she's right there. And I always just write down, Mary Baker, your will be done. Well, I pray for her every day. I don't know how to pray for her anymore. I just pray, God, your will be done in, in her life. I've asked the Lord to take her home. I, I've, I've asked the Lord everything I know to ask. I, I just decided to start praying, Lord, your will be done. Whatever you want. If you want her to live to be 115, we'll, we'll, amen, we'll stay with her. If you want to take her home tomorrow, we'll rejoice about that. We'd say, Lord, your will be done. That's the way I pray uh, for her, and that's on Friday. Then on Saturday, I pray for saints. That's a short list, but... Uh, no, that's a, I, just, I just spend time praying over who God brings in, in my uh, spirit about who in our church. The saints of God, I, I pray for them. And just calling different ones' names, maybe writing a note. That's just my day to pray uh, for saints and uh, calling their name out to the Lord. Then on Sunday is another S day I pray for sinners. Those are lost people that I'm praying for. And I keep a list and just praying for this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and, and asking God to save them. So that's the way I pray. You, you can pray. You should pray. And I'm here to tell you if you're a believer, you will pray. If you're not praying, there's a prayer you need to pray. It's called the sinner's prayer. And you need to get saved. And if you'll call out to God, I'm telling you, he'll put within your heart a burden to pray. And I, I'm telling you, I'm far from the greatest prayer warrior in the world. I'm no example about that. But I, I try to learn. And one of the best things that, that I've ever done to help me pray is just to keep a notebook. Now, I don't keep that notebook for anybody else to look at it. I, I just every day, I, I find when I write lists, I pray better. Uh, that's just for me. But you find your way. I find it helps me after I get done with it, if I go get on my knees and just say, Lord, I just bring these issues again unto you. And so just writing those things down. I pray in Jesus' name no one ever reads those books. I'm not writing them for somebody to read them. I'm praying nobody ever reads them. I put stuff in there that uh, nobody's business. And so I just get done with them. And when I fill one up, I throw it over there in the trunk. And I got another I get. And I... Just keeping a journal and praying those prayers. So you find your way. But I'm telling you that you can pray and you should pray. And if you're a believer, you will pray. And number four, a Christian did pray. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, look right here in our text. Verse number eight. And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Some Christian did pray because here are the prayers held in this bowl by the Spirit of God. He speaks about the seven spirits of God. You find it over in Isaiah 11, 1 you, and 2. You'll find those seven spirits, the wisdom and, uh, of that that's listed. Do you know you wouldn't be sitting here tonight if somebody hadn't prayed for you? Some mother prayed for you. Some grandmother prayed for you. Some Sunday school teacher prayed for you. I'm telling you, a Christian did pray. You wouldn't be here 
if someone hadn't prayed for you. This could have been thousands of years ago. Prayer never go out of date. God stores them up. That's why you ought to pray because after you're dead and gone, you don't know what your prayer life's going to do when you're on the other side. Something you've already prayed about that God's going to move that you never see on this side of eternity that will happen on the other side of eternity. Say, preacher, well, I know. when it, I don't know what you're going to know. I've never been there. Now, somebody will tell you they know what happens over there. And they're smarter than they think they are. I I don't know. I know the country song says that there's holes in the floor of heaven and that you can see what's going on. But, uh, you know, this is not a country song. This is the Word of God. And it doesn't say there's holes in the floor of heaven. I know there's a great cloud of witnesses and maybe we're, but I don't know. But I know this, the, the, the prayers of God's saints are stored. He has them right there. Friend, your prayers will be stored. Somebody prayed for you. Sybil Presley just died. Sybil Presley was the oldest member of Pisgah Baptist Church where I grew up as a little boy and got saved at 10, called preach 17. They had Sybil Presley's funeral Saturday at the Pisgah Church. She was 98 years old. She was the oldest member of our little church. When talking to my father yesterday afternoon, I, uh, he said, you know, Miss Sybil died. I said, yeah. I said, you go to the funeral? He said, well, sure, I went to the funeral. We all went. <laughs> I said, pretty good crowd. He said, house nearly full. That's how you register whether or not you're a good Christian or not if the house is full when you, at Pisgah Church. If nobody comes, you ain't much, all right? I'm just, just, that's just the way they do it. But uh, he said the house nearly full. And he said this to me. He said, that was a good woman. I said, yes, sir, I know because she prayed for me. And he said quickly, she prayed for everybody. Miss Sybil prayed for me. When I stood at the front as a 17-year-old boy, she took my hand, went by. When I said, I've been called to preach, she said, son, I'm going to pray for you. She is old then. She is really old when she died. And the golden bowl holds her intercession for me. Amen. Who are you praying for? And who prayed for you? A lot of people prayed for you. People that are dead and gone prayed for you. And one day, you will be dead and gone. And the question is, who will you have prayed for that the golden bowls will hold your in You putting anything in the bowls? You putting anything in? Or are you just playing a game? I'm telling you, the most powerful thing in the world is not an atomic bomb. It's the power of Almighty God through intercession. God can do more in a moment than we can do in a lifetime. If we ever learn to grab hold of the horns of the altar and pray and don't let go. So a Christian can pray if you say. A Christian should pray, as God tells us to. A Christian will pray. And some Christian did pray. And they prayed for you. And the bowls hold that prayer like incense. And then it says they sang a new song. Worthy you to take the book. Mm -hmm. That book that sealed those seven seals. Break it. Lord, you were slain, purchased for God with your blood. Men from every tribe and tongue and people, nation. We've got to learn that it's international. You've made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God. Don't say one more thing. 
Jesus is praying for you. It's the greatest work he does. He's praying for you. He sits on the throne of intercession. And as long as he prays, your salvation is secure. He sits right now making intercession. You couldn't, you couldn't be a Christian. You couldn't stay saved if he quit praying. But he makes intercession for you.